I'm standing still, you old tit. Oh, no, you ain't. You're all of a fidget. Well, when's the title of be a fidget? He's embarking on a journey to have confabs with his solicitor. <laughs> confabs with his solicitor? All you're doing is getting him to change your will. You're not going to the undertaker to ask him to pay for your funeral. Yeah, might as well be. Oh, will you stand still? What have you been doing with this? Tying up your runner beans? You what learn a, a lesson. State. You learn a lesson from this, young Ned. Keep your distance from grasping old women. All you'll learn from watching him, my lad, is how to behave like a big, soft, blabbing uh... baby when you gets into your dotage. Will you stand still? Right. Now, you know what you've got to say to the solicitor? Yes. Well, then, what do you got to tell him? I've got to tell him he's a thieving old shark. I've got to tell him that I means to leave all my worldly goods and shackles and whatsoever I owns and possesses to, I can't remember who to oh, Go on. To my loving, the loving apple of my eye and my joyous companion of a long prison no, sentence. Oh, you long-winded old devil. All I want for you is to be resting in your coffin with the lid slammed tight as a hedgehog's backside. That's nice. The body's got to live. But he's got to have a roof over her head. I have no cause for complaint. I should hope not, after all the years I've had to put up with you. But I want it official. I want it signed and sealed. All right, all right. Right, then. Well, be off with you. <clears throat> Sunday best of the start, Dickie. Move over, lad. Uh, if this be life, give me the dank, muddy glory of the grave. Don't take your collar off, and no one doing your buttons, and no stopping off in pubs. Do you understand me? I don't want you to see you drinking in pubs with this lad at his age in life. Mm, get up there, go on. Don't forget, you're going to be in the presence of the law. It's business. Now be dutiful, behave yourself, and no spitting on the floor. Speak to where I want to speak, grab up old tit. You listen to me now, young Ned. Never let a woman get a grip on you. When you're weak and vulnerable in your Sunday best, the dicky is choking the living mortal juices out of you. You promised me that? Yes, Uncle Silas. Whoa. Whoa. Take the reins. Uncle Silas, if Mrs. Betsy should just like that, she'll... well, she'll... Never mind, she sees me. Never mind what she sees, we shall see what we shall see. Get up there! Where are we going? This isn't the way to town. Any young Edward? No! Well, dally old. we'll all be done. Get on, boy! Get on there, boy! I wish I could spit. No one can spit like your Uncle Silas, me boy. Oh. When I was young and in my prime, I was a champion spitter of the whole county, no, the whole country. 
God strike me dead if I tell a lie. I can spit a good 50 feet without batting an eyelid. Hey, listen to that, listen to that. Don't you be a spitting or I'll ding your ear. Yes, Uncle. The lady, what we're going to see, doesn't like boys what spit, especially on the floor. Remember that. Yes, Uncle Silas. Oh, business it is, me boy. Oh. If we're not going to see the solicitor, who are we going to see? Mrs. Gadsby. Mrs. Gadsby? Who's Mrs. Gadsby? <sighs> a widow. A widow? Mm. <laughs> is she an old lady, this Mrs. Gadsby? Oh, no, she's not uh, too old, uh, not too young neither. What she is, is she's a widow. Does she live in an almshouse like the widows in our village? <laughs> who are you thinking, boy? Oh, yeah, the older way is what you know. Well, uh, they're either plump as porkers with great wobbling jowls, <laughs> or they're thin and vinegary with their faces covered in tiny cracks like a, a teacup hanging on an old dresser. <laughs> <laughs> and they're dressed in all black and wear little lace caps like Queen Victoria. <laughs> it's squeaky button shoes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, squeaky button shoes. Uh, they've all got asthma and rheumatics, arthritis, they walk with sticks. They've got eyes like beady old crows. <laughs> Does Mrs. Gadsby walk with a stick? Oh, no, I ain't seen to be one, young Ned. <laughs> mm. yeah. But those old ladies in the almshouses, they are widows like Mrs. Gadsby, uh, and they walk with sticks. Well, there's, uh, there's widows and widows, same as there's apples and apples. Some are a slight different from others. How do you tell the difference? Well, if uh, you wanted to tell whether an apple were a sweetening and a sour, what would you do? Taste it. That's just what you do with widgets. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Uncle? Mm? What are we going for? What are we going for? That's simple. We're going to taste the widgets' apples. Yes, but, but... But what? It's the wrong time of the year. The apples won't be ripe yet. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Hmm. Remember, we're on business. You mind your manners when we get there. One, another thing. If I tell you to make yourself scarce, you make yourself scarce. Yes, Uncle. Right, see that you do, and uh, she might give you something nice to eat. <coughs> oh, now then, young Edward, what do you think to that? It seems a beautiful house. That it is, me boy. Oh, without a doubt. Now remember, be on your best behaviour and no spitting. Yes, no spitting. <laughs> Anybody home? Oi there, anybody home? Mrs. Gadsby in there? Perhaps she's gone to see her solicitor. Mrs. Gadsby? It's me, Silas. Well, is he home or ain't he home? Well. Damn it, she ain't here. Mrs. Gadsby. There you are, my boy. What do you think of that for a widow woman? Huh? Well, don't 
Stand got me, lad. Tell your uncle what you think of her. She, she's beautiful. Oh, of course she's beautiful. I don't think your old Uncle Silas is bringing <laughs> to see a widow what's as parched as a dried up old tit, do you? <laughs> well then. Well then. <laughs> well then indeed, Silas. <laughs> Well, why don't you come inside? Yes, come inside. Come in and refresh yourself. Tell it all I will. I won't need asking twice. <laughs> Who is this fine, big, handsome young man? Well, stop gobbing again. Tell Mrs. Gadby who you are. <laughs> yeah, this is my great nephew, um... Liza's lad. Yeah, staying with us. Uh, for the summer while they're travelling. I mean, some fun, aren't we, Ned? Oh, yes. Ah, the lovely, lovely Lysa. Well, my dear, your Uncle Silas has often talked to me about you. You're very welcome. Like strawberries. Come inside, then. You're both welcome to my humble abode. Silas, what's your particular fancy today? Well, you know, uh, well, that I'd... Uh, I'm willing to taste anything you'd care to offer me. <laughs> Will you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, that's a very nice mouthful of cow slip. Shall you join me? Oh, yes, dear. I'll join you. <laughs> mm. Wonderful body. Full, would you say? Oh, I prefer... Rounded. <laughs> but not too sweet. Oh, not sweet, never too sweet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful flavour. Uh, would your uh, elderberry be uh, ready for tasting? It could need more time, my dear. It might not be quite ready. Oh, in my experience, my dear, you can never tell if anything's ready until you've tasted on it. But then you shall taste on it, my dear. Taste on it with pleasure. <clears throat> Oi! Yes, Uncle? You recollect what I told you when we was coming here? Yes. Well, then, what was it? You told me not to spit on the floor. <laughs> I told you to behave yourself. I told you to be seen and not heard. And I uh, told you... Do you like gooseberries, Edward? Uh, oh, yes. You'll find beautiful gooseberries at the far end of the orchard. Will I? Oh, yes. Ah, yeah, that's it, my boy. Oh, uh, you uh, gooseberry off for a half hour or more. Right. Shall I bring some back for you? Well, not yet, uh, Ned. Uh, we ain't gooseberry hungry at the moment, are we, uh, Mrs. Gadsby? Right then, dear. Off you go. Off you go then, my dear. This way. Take as long as you like. I shall. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good move with yours. You're a clever one, aren't you?
boy were bound for town. Business. See a man about a will. Old Hawkins, uh, solicitor. Your will, Dick? Well, there's a cottage. Good kitchen to it. A uh, bit of land and, uh, you know, bits and pieces. <laughs> Who's going to get all this, then? Well, uh, I can't uh, say. I mean, it depends on who deserves it. Who might that be? I don't know. Got to uh, think careful. You better try the elderberry. Mm. Give you strength. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Full of body, more mature, more understanding. More receptor. There's a gold brooch. You can have that. You don't need to. A memento of our times together. Then I treasure it. It's not mine. It's more than I was expecting. Mm. What were you expecting? You'll have to catch me to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> 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 oh, you don't catch it. Will of yours? Oh, not now. Do I take my advice? Woman, I'm bursting with feeling. I want you. Oh, I want you and all. <laughs> I want you to leave. What? Leave everything. Everything to you? <sighs> to Edward. He's only a nipper. <laughs> not for long. Sooner than you think, he's going to be grown up and want a house of his own. With a garden of his own, for a wife of his own. Maybe a few little Edwards of his own. Well, you don't need for nothing. His father. I know friends. how fond you are of him. Surely you want to leave him something to remember you by. Yeah, but Mrs. Betts needs a roof over her head. Women need many things. Knowing they have a roof over their heads is often uppermost in their minds. Leave the cottage to Edward, but for her use in her lifetime. <laughs> Nobody lives forever. You speak for yourself. Uh, not even you, Silas. So perhaps we better make the most of today. <laughs> Everything to Edward. <sighs> to Ned. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? I like Mrs. Gatsby. A fine woman. Did you taste Mrs. Gatsby's apples? Oh, yeah. Uncle? Hmm? Were they sweet or were they sour? Sweet. All of them? Uh, the right ones. Unaccountable sweet. Can we go back and taste Mrs. Gatsby's apples another day? We might have that, boy.
What are you thinking about, me boy? Oh. I was just thinking about the will. When we get home and Mrs. Betts finds out you haven't done the business. Well, the, the solicitors now. Oh. Yeah. We heard that expression where there's a widow, there's a way? Something like that. Well. Yeah, found a way to do the business. I saw you go upstairs. Is that what you do for business? <laughs> <laughs> you said as how you wanted to be allowed to spit. Oh, yes, please. Well, the first thing you got to remember is to find the way of the wind. You heard that one about uh, getting your own back? Yeah. Well, that's what happens if you don't find the way of the wind. Now, there's different kinds of spit. There's the uh, practical spitting, there's the spit derisive, the spit sarcastic, there's the spit aggressive, and they all got different techniques. They all take a different kind of way of doing it, you know. Sugar ready? Yeah, and has been for over an hour. Good, we found it. A long time at the solicitors. Only as long as it took. But all afternoon, solicitors charged by the hour. Well, your appointment was at two o'clock. That's that's over four hours for, for for a simple will. Last will and testaments can't be done quickly, woman, or lightly. Yeah, they've all got to be written out and sworn and uh, witnessed. So what did he say in this will then? That's for. Me and the lawyer know the boy weren't present. But you'll be having with the contents. A roof over your head like you asked, when there'll be six feet of dirt over mine. What else beside the cottage? Everything else, as long as you draw a breath. So oh, stop belly aching with all these questions. Did he keep his collar on, Ned? Yes, Mrs. Betts. Took him to the pub. That's where you're late. Ned, did I go into any pub? No, Uncle Silas. So there you old harpy. Yeah, just one miserable thimble of sherry when we're in the office doing the business. Ah, apple dumplings. One of my favourites. Mmm. Tasty baked apples in a velvety pastry. <laughs> there we are then. Afternoon accounted for. Ah. <laughs> 